so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So we have something we can compare it with and realize what it's about. In the days of Noah, Noah was the only one that was preparing an ark that was for the saving of his soul and for his family. And by the grace of God, we can be the ones that are preparing according to God's will. 38, for as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, you know, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. And we can see so plainly how the whole world has been distracted from the word of God and the truth of God. Now they're all involved in sports and making money. Everything else is more appealing to mankind. Marriage and giving in the marriage. No one has a few minutes to give to the Lord. No one has any time for the Lord. And the saddest part about it, he doesn't ask for 24-7 of your time. He just asks for a small amount of your time. You know, just, just praise him and thank him for what he's done for you, what he's given you, and how he's blessed you. In 39, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. And then he tells us what it's going to be like for those that have prepared their ark by the grace of God. Then shall two be in the field, and one shall be taken, the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, one shall be taken, the other left. Watch therefore advice from the Lord. Keep your eyes on him. Keep your eyes on the signs of the time. Watch therefore, for ye know not our your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known that the watch, that known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. You know, inside of Thessalonians, it says that this is not going to come on the believer unknowingly, but we're going to see and know that Jesus is coming by the things that are happening and these things are making us prepare so that we won't have our houses broken into but God will help and make that art for us that we might be take, catching, catching in the catching away. Therefore be ye also ready for in such an hour as you think not the Son of Man, man cometh who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he shall come, find so doing. And that's my prayer. Lord, have me doing what you want me to be doing when you come. I don't want to be on sidetracked and nothing else but your will. Verily I say unto you, he shall make him rule over all his goods. And if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunken, the Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he is not aware of, and shall cut him asunder, and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites, there shall be weeping and gashing of teeth. And I pray, my Lord, I don't want no weeping and gashing. I want to be obedient to you. And each and every one of us, each and every one under the sound of my voice in this church, you are a ruler over your household. And God has given you specific instructions to believe and trust in, which is his word and to believe and trust that he will bring the past in your life. So focus on the things that he has said so that we can be good and faithful servants unto him. Verse, and we're going to go to verse 25 because he starts to explain some a little more detail about his coming. Because you know what? The church is his bride. We are the people that God is preparing 
to live eternally and throughout eternity with Jesus Christ. And he is preparing us to be a bride without spot nor wrinkle, to be a virgin bride that is pure, holy, and righteous by trusting and believing in his word and yielding to his spirit. Verse chapter 25, Matthew chapter 25, verse, verse, verse. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were wise. They were obedient. They trusted the Lord and did what he told them. And five were foolish. They were sloppy. They didn't adhere to the things that he said. They unfortunately were moved by powers that did not have them prepared. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. And every time we assemble ourselves and we get together and we give testimonies and we sing songs and we give praises and we thank God for what he's doing in our lives, we encourage one another, letting us realize and know that the Lord is with us to help us through whatever situation that we might be in. You know, they overcame by the word, by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. What God has done for you to bring you to the place that you're in now where you are willing to lay down your life and yield, give your life to him that you might have his life. Because it's his life that we're going to get that's going to make us his bride and bring us to that marriage supper of the Lamb. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. You know, I want to keep mine oiled up all the time. I want to keep the full tank. I want to always have a praise in my mouth and thanksgiving to God and Jesus for what he's done. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And that's another thing. All ten of them went to sleep. They, they didn't stay up. None of them. All of them went to sleep. Six, at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgin aro virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us your oil, for our lamps are gone out. You know, that's one thing that I'll never forget. Sister Young Red said, You can't give nobody faith. You know, you got to build your own faith. In God. You gotta build your own belief in God. You gotta believe your own trust in Jesus. That's between you and Him. Can't get it from nobody else. It's only only from Him. You can get it from what He's done for you in your life. The changes that He's made, the blessings that He's brought out, the deliverances that He's brought in your life that you know no one could have done. But Jesus is gonna be the power and the faith in that oil that's going to be able to bring you through whatever situation you might be in. But, but the wise answer is saying, not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to, they, to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, see, now they have left where they were supposed to be. See, that's the main thing I tell everybody. Stay with Jesus. I don't know what you're going through don't really matter. Just stay with Jesus. Because he has the power to deliver. You know, he has the power to bring you out of that situation. He has the power that one day you're going to see your loved one again that may have went before you. Just stay with Jesus. That's going to be the answer to every situation you might have. Don't leave him. Because if you leave him, you might get caught out there and can't get back. Stay with Jesus. Your best thing will be the best thing you ever did. Ain't nothing going to separate me from the love that God has put in me for him, for what he's done for me. Because I know that it was nobody but him that made the changes in my life. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him 
to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. You know, he tells us that's what he wants us to do. Stay praying up. Stay believing. Watch and pray. And let's go to Revelations 19. That's Revelations, the 19th chapter. And those that make it through the catching away, because I believe the Lord is going to have to catch him away. You know, it's very plain where he can have it, because everything that the Lord does, the enemy has a lie for. Because as soon as the nuclear bombs start getting live back and forth, it's going to incinerate everything. It's going to destroy. You look at what's going on in God's nose, and those buildings are just torn down. It's going to be way different when those nuclear bombs start flying back and forth. See, you ain't going to see nothing but, like it was in Maui, nothing but flat land. It's way different than, than what you see now. Ain't going to be no flesh. Ain't, ain't nobody going to be starving. Let's go. Everybody going to be dead. That's just, everybody going to be burned up. So they're not going to be able to distinguish a whole lot. But the Lord will have his hand and catch away those that are still here at that time. That have trusted and believed in him. And taken out for his marriage supper of the Lamb. Verse, chapter, Revelation's 19th chapter, starting at the first verse. And after these things I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. Giving them praise. I'm going to give them praise now. Because I believe that one day that's going to be happening in our lives. For true and righteous, verse 2, are his judgments. For he has judged the great war, who, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. And again they said, Alleluia. And her smoke rose up forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders and four beasts fell down and worshiped God and sat on the throne saying, Amen, Alleluia. And the voice came out of the throne saying, Praise our God, all you servants that fear him, both small and great. And I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude, as the voice of many waters, as the voice of many thunderings, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God is omnipotent, reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the lamb has come and his wife has made herself ready he has given us the power and access to his holy throne by giving us intercession to him while he is at his throne of race that he can tell us and do for us everything to make us ready for the marriage supper of the lamb and verse 8, and to her was granted she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. And he said unto me, write, blessed are they which call are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, these are true sayings of God. God is going to do this. But the believer is who he will do it for. And I fell at his feet to worship him, and he said unto me, See thou do it not, for I am of thy fellow servant and thy brethren, that we have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Everything that Jesus said, everything that was been inspired by the Holy Ghost, everything that is written in this book, that God has designated the word of God is going to come to pass. It is the spirit of prophecy. And I saw heaven open up and behold a white horse and he that sat upon him called faithful and true 
and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress the wine of the fierceness of the wrath of Almighty God. And he had on his vesture and on the thigh on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying, To all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, come and gather yourself together unto the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken with him, the false prophet that wrought miracles, that wrought miracles before him which he deceived them that received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image, both those were cast alive into the lake of burning fire with brimstone. And the remnant of the slain with the storm of with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceedeth out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. And that tells us the end of all those that don't accept Jesus as Lord and resist his word. But we thank God that we are his bride and he is preparing us to for the great marriage supper of the Lamb of God. So let's give him some praise and some thanksgiving for his mercy and his grace and his word that he's going to fulfill in the believers of life. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise God. So whatever you might be going through now, whatever you might be suffering now, whatever fears and frustrations might be in your life now, know this, that the Lord is preparing you to be with him forever. He's going to dry every tear, every sorrow, and every sadness, and every painful thing that we ever might have went through on this land, in this world, when we make that union with him as his bride. So let's make ready Amen. for the king to come into our lives even greater than he has already and that he might prepare us and make us ready for that great day when he brings his bride out of this miserable world. Amen. 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 Thank God Hallelujah. for Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Thank God for Jesus. I'm glad he can give us hope in a time like this where there is no hope. Amen. Praise God. Brother yeah. Tyrone, Amen. Tyrone Jr., can you close us out with a word of prayer, please? Father God, Lord, thank you for that message that we heard this evening. Help us to hold on to it. And keep it, Father. I yes, ask that you Lord. continue to strengthen us and keep us and protect us from things seen and unseen. And Lord, these things I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank God for each and every Amen. one of you. And be in prayer Amen. Amen. for another. That the Lord might strengthen us in his spirit. Cover us in his blood. Amen. And anoint us with his precious word and spirit. Amen. Y'all have a good evening and a good weekend. And Lord will all get together and praise him some more. Amen. Amen. Love you guys. Amen. Amen.